G'day mums and dads. In this video we're going to talk about how to tell if your child is suited to a career in engineering. This video is for mums and dads who wonder if their child might be an engineer. We want to talk about the aptitudes that make for an engineering career. Stick around. Hi, I'm Arnold. Let's do this. There are many different kinds of engineers and if you look at uh, just the main branches of engineering you'll see electrical, electronics, mechanical, structural, civil, aerospace, architectural and then if you go to Wikipedia you can find all sorts of sub-branches of engineering. Molecular engineer, biomolecular engineering, cybernetic engineering, materials engineer, process engineer, biomedical engineer, Corrosion engineer, environmental, geotechnical, mining, transport, utility, water, computer, software, optical, acoustical, optomechanical and thermal. The list goes on and on. One way that people like to predict what's a suitable career for someone is by looking at their temperament. And you know what I mean. There are introverts, there are extroverts, and then there's plenty of uh, literature out there that helps you to divide up temperaments into sanguine, choleric, phlegmatic or melancholic. Uh, and then of course there's the Myers-Briggs type indicator and this is a self-test that's been around, it's pretty popular. I usually don't like to pay much, too much attention to these things but I know a lot of people do and uh, there's some helpful stuff in there. And the way it works basically is that there's four different pairs of characteristics if you like. So there's of course the common one, introvert or extrovert, then number two is sensing or intuitive, thinking or feeling, and then judging or perceiving those four different pairs of letters. And so there's 16 possible combinations of these personality types. And basically the, you do a self-test uh, and a whole lot of questions and you eventually come up with one of these categories. And there are different ones like INTJ, ISTJ, INTP and so on. And uh, I did find an interesting article in Forbes magazine and uh, here it is. Uh, you can look this up. I've put the link to all of these links in the, in the description below this video. And uh, so you, I've got a couple of examples down here. I'll just read out a couple of these. And this is where they're talking about these personality types and how they apply to different careers. So here's one INFP. INFPs are creative, empathetic and inquisitive. They're natural helpers and they're deeply caring. They tend to have excellent communication skills, so they make great writers. They thrive in other artistic positions as well, such as musicians, graphic designers, and language arts. And then we've got this one here, uh, number eight, INTP. Individuals with this personality type are intellectually curious, but also analytical, objective, and conceptual. They thrive as architects and engineers, hello, as well as in various scientific fields and in construction. And so you see uh, there's ways of understanding these various, and they can be categorized. You can do a bunch of reading on this if you like, but basically the INTP is the one that most people agree is most suited to engineering. But I've, I've read plenty of stuff that says that uh, maybe half of these personality types are in fact suited to engineering one way or another. And there's various ways that they can and support those ideas. And one thing I've noticed as a teacher in engineering is that uh, it's predominantly a male thing, a boy thing. In fact, uh, I've had nearly all boys in my classes the odd girl, once in a while, every year or two, there's one female there. And uh, it just so happens that uh, I have read somewhere, but this INTP personality type is uh, represented uh, predominantly by males. There's 80% of them are males and only 20% of them are female. I don't know, you go figure. But I think that parents are the best judges of their children's aptitudes. But here's a tip that might help you to decide whether or not uh, your child is likely to become an engineer. Well, do they plan? Do they like to draw diagrams? And are they always planning? If they do, I think you could be pretty confident that an engineering career would suit them. That's a young person showing signs of becoming an engineer. So how can you foster and encourage a budding engineer? Well, you can help them with their maths and physics. And if you can't, find someone who can. Get them a tutor. But most importantly, get them started on computer-aided design, CAD. I have another video where I survey the available CAD software that's out there. And most importantly of all for young people, I find the free ones. There is re really one thing that makes a big difference, and that is the aptitude of 3D spatial awareness. And how can you tell if somebody's got that 3D spatial awareness? Well, are they good at reading maps? Can they draw? 
are they good at understanding plans? It's uh, all about these graphical things and 3D spatial awareness is that ability to see something in your mind and turn it around and look at it from different angles. Some people are really good at it and other people can develop it with practice. So how can you develop 3D spatial awareness? Well, I reckon it's really good for kids to play games, especially games that require navigation and map reading. And for example, flight simulators, things like Fortnite and first person shooters. Then of course you can also play with 3D modelling software. Uh, and for ages 8 up until 12 years of age, SketchUp has a free version. And uh, here's what it looks like. This is SketchUp and this is uh, in the browser. It's no download, completely free and it's not even a download. It's just running here in the browser. You want to have some materials to work with and I find that Bonnie Roski's materials here on 3D Vinci, uh, she's got lots of books and resources available for uh, from kindergarten up to uh, year 12 and uh, there's lots of really good stuff there. You can look at her books, you can buy some of them and she's got some free stuff there as well. It's really good to get uh, young ones to do their geometry on the computer screen uh, and that really get, is going to set them up very well for transitioning to computer-aided design software at the right time, maybe about age 12. And then around about age 12, what I suggest is Fusion 360, and you can see my other videos about Fusion 360. Here's Fusion 360, and uh, you can see that uh, this is a really nice, modern, computer-aided design software, easy to learn, and it's uh, great for young teenagers to get started on. And if they do, then they'll be really good at uh, computer-aided design, CAD, they'll be really good at that and that will be their main professional tool while they're a student and then all through their working career. It's a good bet. And here's the uh, website where you can uh, find Fusion 360. Uh, you can download it, you can uh, get a free trial and you can, uh, you want to look at my other videos where I talk about how to get a free version of Fusion 360 legitimately and legally that uh, is ongoing. This is Future Engineering. Keep an eye out for further videos in this series on engineering education, especially prior to university. Subscribe and ring that bell so that you get notifications every time I publish. See you then.